How you doing, guys? Here we are at another video. That's right, gonna be doing a little video for you. We're actually here with Fifth Avenue behind me. I'm gonna be walking up Fifth Avenue and showing you uh, all the mansions of Millionaire's Row. These were all the mansions at the turn of the 20th century where all the rich boys lived uh, and their wives and they, you know, entertained and did all a bunch of crud. So that's gonna be great. We're gonna start down at the beginning of Fifth Avenue and go all the way up. Uh, before we start, Eric, how the hell are you? I'm doing good. That's good to hear. Anything else to report? No, that's literally it. Wow, great. Well, anyways, guys, um, before we start, please check out the Patreon. If you watch more of these things, check out the Patreon. I'm trying to move into one of these mansions. <laughs> Uh, I'm kidding. I just need, uh, you know, just a little bit of support so I could, you know, fund these things, you know, pay rent, all that stuff. That's how, uh, that's the, how this thing's going to grow, baby. So uh, if you can help out, that's a big deal. Also, like and subscribe the video. Uh, that's how uh, we bump in the analytics ahead of all the top seven, you know, Tex-Mex brunch spots in New York or whatever, whatever uh, you know, is beating me right now. Anywho... <laughs> What do you think, Eric? Should we just start this thing? What are we doing today, Tom? Yeah, we're doing the Millionaire's Row, baby. We're doing the Mansions Millionaire's Row. Mansions. Yeah. Got it. I'm on it. All right. I'm moving. Ready? Let's go. Let's go. All right. First stop is the R. Livingston Beekman Townhouse here. This building covered in scaffolding, unfortunately. I tried to get the city to pull it down, but they wouldn't listen. Uh, this building was built in 1905. It was actually designed by Warren and Wetmore, who were the architects of Grand Central Terminal, the Con Ed building. Pretty cool. Actually has uh, 32 rooms. Kind of insane. Uh, it was uh, R. Livingston Beekman actually built it. Yeah, it's, that's a real name. That person clearly uh, has kids who play lacrosse or something. But uh, actually was owned at one point by Vanderbilt. Also was leased out to Benjamin Thaw, who was actually the brother of Harry K. Thaw, who shot Stanford White, the famous architect. Uh, he shot him on top of Madison Square Garden, which, which Stanford White actually designed. You could uh, watch my video on uh, Stanford White for that. <laughs> you know? uh, but a pretty cool building. Uh, we just went on the market for uh, $50 million. Uh, yeah, in 2020, that's a lot of money, especially when the place doesn't even have central air. For $50 million, uh, you don't have central air, you better at least have like, I don't know, heads of state, supermodels, and PhDs, uh, you know, chewing bubble gum and blowing into a fan or something. I don't know. That's weird. Was that weird, Eric? Uh, yeah, maybe a swamp cooler. Yeah, maybe. A swamp cooler? Yeah, it's like a bucket of ice in the fan. I think for $50 million, you better get more than a swamp cooler. Uh, but what do you think, Eric? Should we go inside? Yeah, let's, let's go inside. Fun. Let's go inside. I'm surprising you. No, I'm just kidding. We're not going inside. Yeah, it's a nice try. Uh, yeah, all right. Well, let's move to the next one. Let's just bang these things out, baby. Next one. All right, so we are at 170th Street. This is the Frickin' Frick Collection, the Frick Mansion. This was actually built in 1914 by Henry Clay Frick, who was a railroad, a steel guy, uh, mostly steel. He was actually a friend of uh, Andrew Carnegie, who has a disgusting shanty up the road. Anyways, this was uh, built in 1914, but he died in 1919. Then it has actually turned over to the public in 1935 uh, as a museum. He died in 1914, but he is actually, there's an assassination attempt uh, on him in 1892. This guy named Alexander Berkman, uh, who's an anarchist, uh, took advantage of this homestead strike that was happening uh, at one of their uh, plants to kind of try to spark a revolution through trying to kill him. He, he walks into his Pittsburgh office, shoots him twice, and stabs him three times. He didn't die. It's pretty hardcore. I guess you don't mess with a billionaire, uh, but uh, yeah, he was, was really trying to spark a revolution. In fact, he actually stayed at a hotel under the assumed name of Rachmatov, who was from a, uh, a novel uh, that was dealing with revolution, and so that was a character from a novel. Uh, kind of interesting. Uh, then he went to jail for 14 years and tried to kill himself. <sighs> That's a little dark. Uh, oh yeah, the third floor is actually has room for 27 uh, servants, which is what they had back when they lived in this place. 27 servants is a lot. Uh, you gotta like throw them their own Christmas party with that kind of a company working for you. Uh, but yeah, this is the, uh, the Frick Mansion. Pretty frickin' cool. Oh, we got so close. To what? Not saying pretty frickin' cool. Yeah, I keep saying cool. Sorry. Well, maybe you should put like a counter or something. How many times I say the word cool? Uh, all right. Well, let's keep moving. All right, so I'm at 925 and 926 uh, Fifth Avenue. Uh, yeah, these are two houses that were built at the same time by a guy named John Woodruff Simpson, who actually lived 
uh, in 926 and sold 925. Uh, they were designed by CPH Gilbert. Yeah, that's a pretty cool name, CPH, uh, Charles, and then you know his middle initials or whatever. But uh, anyways, uh, this guy studied at Le Col de Beaux-Arts, Paris, France. You guys heard of it? Uh, at the turn of the century, it was all the rage. He designed lots of houses for the rich, especially on the street. Uh, anywho, uh, 925 was sold uh, actually at one point to a guy named Barrington Moore, who was the son of Clement Clark Moore, who actually wrote uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas, a visit from St. Nicholas. Did you know that, Eric? Uh, no. Well, if you'd watched my video on Chelsea, you would have, because he also developed the neighborhood of Chelsea. There's a nice little, uh, you know, impromptu plug. Uh, but uh, it also was home to uh, the Italian diplomatic mission at, at one point. And in the 1970s, uh, some burglars broke in and they stole four rugs, each valued at $100,000. That's right, the famous carpet bandits of the 1970s. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of them. There's, there's like five Netflix documentaries on them. That's not true. Anyways, uh, pretty cool, uh, pretty swell buildings Amazing. Bo yeah both built at the same time two pretty neato buildings built at the same time uh yeah 925 926 fifth avenue let's keep moving all right this is the edward s harkness house at 175th street uh actually was designed by james gamble rogers who actually designed like you know a lot of mansions obviously but the butler library sloan kettering and uh Yale School, he, he designed Yale University. He designed a lot of frat houses there. So you know he likes to party, you know? Designed lots of beer pong tables. Sick! Uh, anyways, uh, this building was built by Edward S. Harkness, who, uh, like many of the people in this neighborhood, was a self-made man who inherited a huge fortune from his father, uh, but actually was a big philanthropist. So he gave lots of different causes. Um, he gave to lots of schools, Columbia, uh, Yale, uh, University of Florida. No, I'm just kidding, he didn't give the University of Florida. Uh, too snobby for that. Um, but yeah, it's covered in scaffolding, unfortunately. Sorry about that. I went to try to see uh, Mayor Eric Adams about removing the scaffolding for the shoot, but he was too busy uh, getting bottle service at a nightclub. Uh, so I couldn't do that. Uh, Adams burn. Sick Adams burn. Getting political. And Edward S. Harkness was a pretty important New Yorker, which is why he's buried at Woodlawn Cemetery up in the Bronx. A lot of famous people buried there. Irving Berlin, Celia Cruz, Herman Melville. It's a regular who's who of who's dead, you know? So uh, you should check it out if you ever get a chance. But uh, yeah, let's keep moving. What do you think, Eric? Let's go. Let's go. All right, so we are 178th Street. It's raining out here, a little thunder and lightning, but we're putting it up with it for you. <laughs> Uh, hopefully we don't die. Anyways, this is uh, the James Buchanan Duke mansion. Uh, James Buchanan Duke hired a man named Horace Trumbauer to design it. Horace Trumbauer became, uh, you know, designed other buildings and especially a lot of buildings at Duke University. James Buchanan Duke. Duke. James Buchanan Duke. It's named after him. Holy crap. Uh, go figure. Millionaire's Row has lots of uh, houses that belong to people who started colleges. Uh, Vanderbilt, uh, you know, Carnegie, etc. Anyways, uh, this building designed after, and actually modeled after, the Hotel Le Bautier. It's a chateau in Bordeaux, France. Uh, pretty cool. Sorry, I shouldn't say cool. Pretty neato. I don't know. Uh, get too many comments on my use of the word cool. Sorry. Uh, anyways, um, James Buchanan Duke actually became very wealthy off of his uh, control of the American Tobacco Company, uh, which at one point controlled 80% of the cigarettes uh, sold in the United States. And cigarettes uh, control the ability to make you look 100% cooler. Cigarettes. Tom DNYC brought to you by cigarettes. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Tom. No, I know, I'm just kidding. Cigarettes are terrible. Uh, cigarettes equal cancer. Equal cancer. There's your PSA. I turned, uh, I turned the sponsored content to PSA. Anyways, uh, yeah, James Buchanan Duke had this house in 1912 uh, in 1958. Uh, it was actually uh, given over to NYU. So after Duke died, he gave it to his daughter, Doris Duke, who uh, lived here, and she was actually a huge philanthropist. She's an interesting person herself. Traveled the world, she actually became the first female professional surfer, professional surfer, and she gave away about a one, the equivalent of $1.3 billion. <laughs> Wipe out. Wow. That was pretty cool, right? It's not ready for that. Yeah, I know, I gotta, gotta keep you guys on your toes, you know? Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. This is the James Buchanan Duke House. Uh, more Millionaire's Row. Let's keep moving. 
All right, we're at 972 Fifth Avenue. This is the Payne Whitney Mansion. It was actually built in 1909. It was actually designed by Stanford White. Yeah, that's right, you recognize that name. One of the most famous architects in uh, New York City history and also just a perv who was murdered on top of his own building. If you want more about that, watch the video I have about him. I already plugged it once, but uh, you know, why not? Plug it again. Anyways, this building is housed the uh, French cultural services uh, part of their embassy uh, since the 1950s. Interesting fact, in the 1990s, just by chance, they discovered that the young archer sculpture they had in like the lobby area was actually an authentic Michelangelo statue. Pretty cool. Uh, also, it houses the Albertine Bookstore, which is uh, the only French and English bookstore in New York. Uh, it's authentic, uh, meaning that if you go inside and speak, try to speak French to them, they'll roll their eyes at you. I think that's what that means. Uh, check out this sweet bus that just pulled up next to us. It's actually letting out the French ambassador uh, right now as we speak, um, but no, pretty cool building. Uh, I'm sorry, pretty uh, groovy building we have behind me. I just take my word for it, it's behind this bus. This is an interesting fact. In the 1990s, they actually found a box stored in the uh, administration offices uh, containing a dress worn by Marilyn Monroe, which is kind of random. I don't know why that box was there with her dress in it, kind of weird. Um, and just so you know, William Payne Whitney was a rich dude uh, who, uh, another guy who picked himself up by his bootstraps and his $63 million inheritance from his father. It's a common theme here in the Upper East Side. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. All right, I'm just here lounging, relaxing, leaning. You're like the relaxed bro I am at uh, 972 Fifth Avenue. This is the Harry Sinclair House. This was actually built in 1899 by a guy named Isaac Fletcher. It was designed by CPH Gilbert, good old CPH. Uh, then it was sold to the Met, who then sold it to Harry Sinclair in 1918, who then sold it later on to descendants of Peter Stuyvesant, ah, the director general of the Dutch West India Company. We've talked about him in tons of videos, specifically the East Village video. Check that one out. Anywho, it's now home to the Ukrainian Institute of uh, America. But uh, yeah, this building also was home to Harry Sinclair, who Harry Sinclair actually became uh, notorious because he was the owner of the Sinclair Oil Company. And uh, during the Warren G. Harding administration, everyone remembers the old Warren G. Harding administration, he was famous for the Teapot Dome scandal, where he basically bribed the Secretary of the Interior to uh, basically give him government land to drill for oil. Uh, kind of messed up. Yeah, uh, you know. Teapot, the old Teapot Dome scandal, you guys remember that one? How did that look again? The Teapot Dome scandal, That's the, that was the, yeah. Uh, so he, Harry Sinclair, the Teapot Dome scandal. Uh, also, the Ukrainian Institute, they have art and stuff in here. They actually have an art piece uh, that a bunch of activists made. It's a portrait of uh, Putin, Vladimir Putin, uh, made of completely of bullets, uh, which is quite a statement. Uh, unfortunately, Putin would probably like that, so um, would kind of defeat the purpose. But uh, yeah, kind of dark. But look at that molding and look at the stonework. Beautiful building. Bro. It's a beautiful building, Harry Sinclair House. All right, yeah, all right, we're gonna move on. Let's go. So we're at 991 Fifth Avenue now. This is uh, the American Irish Historical Society, in case you can't read. But uh, this building was actually finished, well, by the way, the American Irish Historical Society was founded late 1800s by, uh, actually in, where else? Baston, kid. It's been housed here for a long time. It just recently got put on the market for $52 million, which is quite a price tag for a building that doesn't have any bedrooms or bathrooms with showers. So you're gonna have to install those yourself or just use a you know, golden bucket or something to bathe. But uh, it was built by Mary King when her husband died. She, left, he was, she was left a huge inheritance, built this building. And to give you an idea what the neighbor was like in 1900 when she built this, uh, her neighbor, directly to the south was Frank W. Woolworth. One of the richest men back then, he actually started Woolworth and built the Woolworth Building in Lower Manhattan. How cool is that, 1913? Well, anyways, I think it's cool. Maybe you'll find this cool. This is actually the setting and the location used for Logan Roy's home in the, in the TV show Succession. Succession! Huh? You know Succession, Eric? Hey, on HBO. Oh, everyone loves watching extremely rich people live, baby. That's the show. Perfect, we're talking about millionaires' homes in the early 1900s. That's a show about millionaires and billionaires in the uh, 2020s, I guess. Uh, all right, well, this is, uh, this is the, uh, the King, old former King residence, the American Irish Historical Society, right across from the Met, baby. 
Let's keep moving. And this is the Benjamin Duke House. This is here right in front of the Met Museum. Uh, it was actually finished in 1901, then it was bought by Benjamin Duke. You may recognize that name because we just talked about his brother a little bit ago. Benjamin was James's brother, the Duke, the Bash Bros, the two Duke brothers who uh, ran the American Tobacco Company, also started Duke Energy, huge uh, uh, philanthropists and money bros in North Carolina, actually. They built a lot of stuff in North Carolina. Duke University is named after those guys. Anywho, this was finished in 1901. It was actually held by members of the Duke family until 2006 when it was sold for $44 million uh, to some dude who then sold it in 2010 to Carlos Slim, who at the time was the richest person in the world, the Mexican guy. Carlos Slim, uh, my, name, my last name is Delgado, which actually means slim in Spanish. Maybe I should like try to get some, you know, get him to join my, join my Patreon. Uh, oh yeah, it was just listed recently uh, by Sotheby's for $80 million. So that's some monies, baby. All right, well, if you're ever wondering what this brick mansion in front of the museum is, where all the you know, tourists are eating ice cream, Benjamin Duke House. All right, let's go. Okay, so we're at 1028 uh, Fifth Avenue. Uh, don't mind my backwards hat. It's just a, you know, like I'm a narc, uh, you know. It's okay, you kids got any uh, doobies, huh? The old narc with the backwards hat. Uh, anyways, 1028 Fifth Avenue, this is known as the Florence Vanderbilt Mansion. It was actually built in 1901 by Jonathan Thorne, who made a fortune in the leather industry. Yeah, that's right. Uh, actually, that, around that time, the two mansions next to it, 1027 and 1026, were also starting to be built. Uh, anyways, Florence Vanderbilt eventually buys 1028 down the road. Uh, you may recognize the name Vanderbilt from all over New York. Uh, the Vanderbilt family, you know, as in Cornelius Vanderbilt, Bill Grand Central, they're a big deal. Um, Anyways, a few years after that, uh, well, she eventually dies, but a few years later, uh, it was bought by the Marymount School uh, by uh, some sisters, and it was starting a Marymount School for girls. They actually bought 1027 and 1026 to uh, expand the school, which is kind of interesting. All right, let's keep moving. Okay, this is 1048 Fifth Avenue. This is the William Starr Miller House, which was finished in 1914. It was designed by Kerr and Hastings, who built the New York Public Library. Uh, ever heard of it? Anyways, William Starr Miller, oh, by the way, was married to Edith Warren, who was the sister of Whitney Warren, who actually designed Grand Central Terminal. Look at this, what a small little world, huh? Small little world of the rich people. Uh, it was actually home to uh, Vanderbilt, uh, different people throughout the years. Uh, but in 1994, it became the uh, Neue Gallery, which houses uh, art from Austria and Germany. Uh, that's right, the Germans. But uh, you know, it's got people like Gustav Klimt, Josef Hoffmann, Vasily Kandinsky. Uh, it's actually a really nice place. Uh, a lot of the art was actually recovered by, uh, because it was looted by the Nazis. Uh, ever heard of them? But uh, this place has Cafe Sabarsky, which is a really cool little ca Nazis cafe here. They stole art. They stole a lot of stuff. Um, and they, you know, stole a lot. They stole a lot they of art. They attacked the Nazis. They really, they really, very rude people, those Nazis. Uh, but this is uh, also, uh, Ronald Lauder helped start this museum and he actually uh, owned the building. Uh, he was uh, the eldest son of uh, Estee Lauder. Uh, Estee Lauder, the, uh, the fashion, what is it, the makeup company, you know? Maybe I should, maybe I should uh, do some, some commercials for them. You could, yeah, yeah, it's very possible. All right. Well, yeah, this is the uh, William Star Miller House. Pretty cool. Another little mansion on Fifth Avenue. Let's keep moving. Yep. This is 1083 Fifth Avenue. This is the Archer Milton Huntington Mansion. Yeah, that's a real name, Archer Milton Huntington. That's, a, that's definitely a guy who, who owned boat shoes. Uh, it was actually built in 1902, Archer Milton Huntington, actually. Uh, his single mother, at the, uh, when he was 12 years old, uh, married the owner of a railroad company, Jackpot. And uh, he never really took into industry, he didn't really is interested in that, but he was interested in uh, philanthropy. So as he grew up, he, took, uh, he, he got married, he lived here, and he took an interest in the arts. Uh, meaning that he uh, left his wife for a sculptor. And uh, she actually took over the place and uh, she actually kept an apartment for herself at the top after she had donated the building to the National Academy uh, at school. And we got a bus behind me. Hopefully, uh, maybe Anna will come out and walk up to us. 
Is she walking? No. That was worth a shot. Okay, let's keep moving. All right, this is the Carnegie Mansion. Ah, look at that, pretty cool. On Fifth Avenue here, uh, and named after Andrew Carnegie, who built this in 1902. It's a 64 room uh, house. That 64 rooms isn't that many, you know. But he was one of the richest men to ever live. Uh, he, he actually started a steel company, invested in lots of stuff initially. He was actually an immigrant from Scotland. Look at that, immigrants. Well, immigrants all over New York. But he uh, invested in all kinds of things, sleeper cars, all kinds of things, and, and basically got his fortune off steel. He sold his steel company in 1901. We also talked about Henry Clay Frick. He was uh, one of his uh, partners in the steel biz. Uh, but he sold his steel company in 1901 to uh, a man named J.P. Morgan for $480 million, which at the time was like infinity dollars. Uh, he actually was a huge proponent of giving his money away. And he believed in giving his money away while he was still alive. He actually wrote a book called The Gospel of Wealth. Yeah, it's a real book. A reading from the Gospel of Wealth. Uh, it's the Bible here, I guess, in New York. But uh, yeah, he wrote a book called The Gospel of Wealth where he talked about all of his beliefs about money. And part of it was he believed that you should give your money away while you're alive because then you have control over where you give it away, all those kinds of things. Uh, you know, and you can kind of make sure that it gets used correctly and wisely. Uh, he gave away like uh, $350 million in his lifetime. Uh, and he believed, uh, his quote was, a man who dies rich dies thus disgraced. Uh, and yeah, but anyways, this is now the Neue Gallery. No, it's not the Neue Gallery. It's not the Neue Gallery. It's not. It's the Cooper Hewitt Design Museum. Uh, it's part of the Smithsonian. Uh, but we'll talk about that when we focus on museums. Yeah, Andrew Carnegie. You may know his name from, you know, libraries, from, you know, Carnegie Mellon University, all kinds of stuff that he gave money to in his lifetime. We could all learn a thing or two. Maybe I should donate my fortune. Huh? I mean, great idea. Yeah. Let's see how let's see how let's see how far four hundred and fifty dollars goes. All right, let's go. We're at 191st Street, right here on the corner of Fifth Avenue at the former Auto Con Mansion. Yeah, this is the former Auto Con Mansion. It was finished in 1918. CPH Gilbert, another CPH Gilbert, one of the hits. Uh, another Bose, Bose Hall. Masterpiece. It was actually modeled after the Palazzo della Cancelleria of Rome. Uh, thank you. Uh, buongiorno. But this whole building uh, was sold after uh, they died, after they, they long since passed into the next realm. It was given over to the Convent of the Sacred Heart to run a school. Uh, and it's actually expanded since. And it uh, actually is where Lady Gaga went to school. Stephanie Germanata, there's your little trivia. So next time you're in the bar and they're like, hey, what's, what's Lady Gaga's real name? Or they say, who is Stephanie Germanata better known as? You could say Lady Gaga and you're gonna remember this face, baby, you're welcome. You know who Lady Gaga is, Eric? Uh, yeah. She's the one who sings, uh, can't read my, can't read my, no, he can't read my book of face. Peabody like nobody. Oh. I don't think that's the real end of it. Uh, no. But uh, the first part is right. All right, well, this is the Autocon Mansion. Let's keep moving. All right, just hanging out, lounging, relaxing here with the arm on a post. That's what the relaxing, chill dudes do. I'm at 1109 Fifth Avenue. This is the Felix Warburg Mansion, named after Felix Warburg, who was a German uh, Jewish immigrant, uh, another immigrant, pretty cool. Uh, he came here, was a big patron of the arts and also of Jewish causes. He married a woman named uh, Frieda Schiff, who was actually the uh, daughter of a very wealthy banker. Go Felix! <laughs> Sick bro, <laughs> pretty cool man. And uh, they moved into this place. Uh, he died actually at age 66, fairly young, of a heart attack. Hey man, death is a great equalizer, doesn't matter how rich you are, huh? Something to learn there. But uh, she took over, lived here for a few years, actually donated the mansion to the Jewish Theological Seminary, which I talked about in my Morningside Heights video. You should watch that one. Uh, but he was a big patron of different Jewish causes and activists. In fact, there is a village in Israel named after him. It's called the Kafar Warburg. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, pretty, pretty awesome to have a, a village named after you. One of these days, I'll have one named after me. I call it Delgadosville. <laughs> Delgadoville? What do you think, Delgadoston? I think you have time to work on it. Yeah, I do, a lot of time. And uh, yeah, this was his, his place, uh, the Warburg Mansion, now the Jewish Museum, which I'll talk about in the museum video, don't you worry. All right, 
let's keep moving. We're at 1130 Fifth Avenue. This is the northernmost of the mansions, still intact. This is the Willard Strait House. Beautiful example of colonial revival architecture. Now, this was finished in 1915, uh, a little later on, because remember, uh, when Carnegie built his mansion in 1902, he was kind of moving north of what everyone else was doing. Uh, so a little, you know, a few years later, people caught on. They're like, oh, that's pretty cool. I want to live there. So Willard Strait, this financier for the J.P. Morgan Company, ever heard of it? Open this. And his wife, Dorothy, was also very popular in her own right, had her own money too. But she was a, she started the Junior League in New York. She would host teas here for different causes, like women's causes, labor union causes, and stuff like that. When you host a tea, it's kind of like what, I guess today, you hosted like a White Claw. You know, and you have a bunch of people over and you discuss things, right? Do people do that, Eric? Uh, no parties I've been invited to. I, yeah, I don't really get invited to parties. That's not obvious enough. But, uh, like I said, one of the most beautiful examples of colonial revival architecture in the city. Yeah, we just got honked at. Let's keep it running. I'm getting, uh, we just moved to a different spot. Who cares? This is, uh, this is the Willard Strait House, and we're going to keep moving to Fifth Avenue. We get honked at, baby. They don't, no respect for his, history. All right, let's, let's go over to these flowers. Okay, so now I'm back to the original spot to tell you that we're going to the next spot, which is pretty much done, because this is, like I said, the northernmost intact. Let's keep moving. There it is, man. We finished. We're done. We're done, dude. We did it. We walked all the way up Millionaire's Row, all the way up Fifth Avenue, saw the mansion, saw, heard all the stories, saw how much it's changed. Now it's all apartments back then. All the rich boys wanted to live in mansions in the turn of the 20th century now. You couldn't afford that. I guess you can. Some people still do. But, uh, you know, you can live in an apartment now, too, and still get your 20,000 square feet. So why, uh, why bother? Uh, but yeah, we're here. End of the video. Eric, what'd you think, man? We learned a lot. I thought it was good. It was great. Dense, information dense. Packed. There's tons of info here. You could watch this thing 10 times, baby. Please do. <laughs> and each time, don't forget to like it. Uh, subscribe every time. I don't know how that, that's how it works, but... I'm getting eaten by bugs. Are you getting eaten Yeah, I'm bugs? getting destroyed. My legs and ankles are destroyed. Uh, I have humongous cankles now because of it. But uh, also, uh, guys, check out the Patreon. That's huge. <laughs> you know, check out the Patreon if you liked it. Uh, that's how we fund these things, all that stuff. Also, like, subscribe. Uh, it'll help us in the analytics ahead of all the, you know, uh, inside this $35 million mansion, you know. We're, we're trying to show you the history and all that stuff. You know, if you want to go watch the real estate stuff, go watch that. But, uh, but bump us in the analytics. Come on. All right, Eric, I think that's pretty much it, man. I don't know. Uh, we, we saw a lot today. I'm ready to get out of here. What do you think? Away from the water. All right, away from the water. Well, that's it, baby. We're done. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all later.